Welcome back to Walsh Fan TV. The Joy and the Pain podcast is also live, so thanks for listening and subscribing there as well. Every view, every subscribe helps the channel, so uh, thanks for that. Right then, Doncaster away. Um, the steam train is running. And uh, if we're talking Doncaster, we're going to be talking to Chal, haven't we? Here he is. Hi, Chal. Hello there. Morning. What an incredible run. I'm just going to take you back for a second to uh, the 10th of February. Warsaw 16th, Doncaster 20th, Crawley 15th. Since then, Warsaw have had a very good run in 12 games. 24 points from 12 games, seven wins, three draws, two losses. Mm. Doncaster, 29 points from 12 games, nine wins, two draws, and just one defeat. And we know what that one defeat was, don't we? Mm. This will be interesting. Was, you guys were um, already on the march a little bit, and uh, we managed to beat you. Um, but since then, you've been bam, 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 bam. That's six wins on the bounce. Um, that's um, impressive. Can Doncaster, well, effectively, can Doncaster sneak into that seventh place? If you win every game from now on, you get 73, which may very well just do it. How are you feeling? Are you enjoying your little, uh, your, your light late charge or do you think it's all too late for you no I'm, I'm really enjoying it it's it's been a fantastic run so far i think that the the squad's coming together really nicely i think that the um the way we're playing at the moment's linking very well you know the, the style of play is coming together you can see it clearly um the players are turning up a lot more consistently week in week out and you know, this is the right kind of form at the right time. Do I think it can continue? I think there's a chance we could win the last five games this season, 100%, uh, including this one. I think that there's a real opportunity to to win every game, treat it as five cup finals and see where we are at the end of the season and just, you know, look at it at the end of the season saying, we've done what we can, now it's up to everything else to fall into place. So I think there's an opportunity to keep doing it. Overall, I think that we can at least try. If we don't run and breathe, we can't try. Yeah. And it starts on Tuesday. And I think that, you know, the first of our five cup finals are just as important as the last. And I'm really, you know, hopeful that we'll we'll keep this run going. The... Um... Obviously, the January transfer window was absolutely marvellous for you. Um, Lauter Tula on loan from Hull, mm. uh, the keeper, he's doing well. Only conceded two in the last seven. So, since you played Warsaw, he's only conceded two in seven games. Wow. That is. I, I didn't even know that. I didn't even know that start. That just proves how good he's been he's uh, just not been... conceded not conceded in the last four games Morecambe three nil Wrexham one nil Crawley two nil Forest Green two nil that's amazing um he he's a perfect modern sweeper keeper he, he commands his area very well he sweeps the ball well he defends his box well he is passionate he's charismatic he's what you want in a goalkeeper in a number one and we will be we will be begging Hull City for a permanent deal this summer. I can guarantee you of that. He'll be one of the top players on the list, definitely. Um, and long may continue because he's just been fantastic. Um, Adela Kun, he's mm. uh, he's been doing well for you. When we spoke before the Warsaw home game, um, he was the player to watch out for. But he had a very poor game, I thought, against us. I think he looked like. I'm the best player on the pitch. Everybody give me the ball. And uh, he didn't look the team player. And um, and Warsaw sort of isolated him as such. And um, and he just, nothing happened for him. But uh, he's done well since, hasn't he? He's, um, what, two, three, three goals he's scored since uh, you played us? 
Um, yeah, I think Adelaide for me is one of those one of those players that um, just on his day can shine. I think that he's a real individual. He's uh, magic on the ball, magic with his feet. He's a very a very twisted player, a very tricky player uh, on his best day. I thought Walsall wasn't a great game. There have been a couple of games in this kind of run where he's had mainly quiet spells, but he's still pops up with something and that's what I like about him I like that we've got a player that can maybe have a quiet game but can pop up and deliver when necessary and you need someone like that that can deliver in moments so uh, you know I still think he's been brilliant uh, overall and long may it continue because I think he's a brilliant player and uh, that was from Reading isn't he is that correct uh, Lincoln Link our Lincoln that's it from Lincoln um, Lincoln, obviously, Freddie Draper, um, they've got some skills over at Lincoln, haven't they? They're doing their, yeah, they're doing, doing just as good as well. I think, I, I think we can... The, the funny thing is, us and Lincoln are kind of similar because we're both playing great football and we're both on great runs and both of us could sneak into seventh in our respective leagues. So we, could, we can learn a lot from each other, 100%. And obviously, well done to Lincoln so far. Looking at the, uh, looking at the table, uh, Crawley... Um, as I say, they're on as good a run as um, Walsall and Doncaster, in fairness. Crawley, mm. absolutely um, ripping it up, aren't they? Um, to win 4-1 at Mansfield is a mad result. That's a statement. That's an absolute statement. Um, that just shows the job Scott Lindsay's done there. Um, I think many people would predict them to finish in the bottom two because they had, what... I'd well, say some people they were struggling like Walsall were really. Yeah, I mean, some people describe their squad as a National League South side with the, with the transfers they brought in, but I mean, Scott Lindsay's done a wonderful job with that side. I mean, he he was robbed of being nominated for manager of the season. He he he, he was robbed. Um, who would want to the, play? Who would want to play Crawley in the playoffs with the run there on? I and don't then, know. Um, it, the startling fact for me, the startling fact for me, you look at the stats, they've only drawn five all season. So it's like a, a friend of mine, Lee, a friend of the channel, um, he's saying like, we've just got to go for it. And mm. uh, rather than settling for a draw, sort of really sort of going for it. And I think that's what Crawley are doing. Um, I think they're definitely going to make top seven. I'd say so. Um, um so we're looking then at crew and barrow and um, barrow have got everybody to play all the top teams to play mm. if they win all their games they'll finish in the playoffs they'll finish in the top three but losing the last two and the defeat at swindon was um very poor for them mm. and um, on 67 points they've got five games left to get including to us 73 and they've got you to play yeah so they've got all, they've got all it, the tough teams to play they've got crawley to play as well yeah it's barrow's got a really tough run and the form they've been on at the moment you can you can't rule out them dropping out of the playoffs altogether at this point um they're, they're in a they're in a poor slump crew have not been on the greatest of form either so there's a chance they could end up slipping out by the end depending on what happens if they can You're recover looking, their form before the end of the season the one i'm i think i don't know whether fearful is the right word the one i think have got the biggest concern for slipping out is definitely crew um i'd have personally biggest, gone with barrow i'd have personally gone with barrow because i think their form's just been worse and i think that I just don't know if they're going to recover it or not. Um, but yeah, crew are struggling, struggling to get any kind of form. Um, they're away to Morecambe on Tuesday, mm. then at home to Grimsby, and Grimsby are absolutely fighting to stay in the league because they are very much at risk of going down. Um, then they're at home to Wrexham, mm. who are finalizing their place in the top three and then it's going to be a big game for both of them colchester at home to crew last match of the season so mm. they're going to be up against teams really bat it, battling and fighting it's going to provide a very interesting final <laughs> day um what we're you know 
for the final day of the season, we're possibly looking here at, at third place, the playoffs and the relegation zone potentially secured on the last day of the season. I mean, this is going to be this is going to be a wonderful last day of the season. We're away at Gillingham. Um, so we could end up, you know, depending on all the results, could end up sneaking into seventh if we, if we, you know, <laughs> beat Gillingham or stick to seventh if we beat Gillingham. Uh, Gillingham could get into seventh and stick to it if they beat us. I think um, Gillingham, but, I think Gillingham um, they've only got three games left. The most points they can get 69. Ah, uh, okay. So they're not going to do it. Um, Wimbledon, they've only got three games left. But win those three games, they're on 71. You would think 71 is not going to be enough either. No, I think Gillingham and Wimbledon will be in League Two next season. I just don't think they've got enough to, to sneak in there. Like I say, I think with our form at the minute, there's a chance we could sneak in there, especially if we win on Tuesday. It's There's a real opportunity here, and I, I'm not going to rule us out at all. It's it's such an open race at the moment. Literally, it's, it's we've, nice, we've literally... It's nice to be involved. Nice to be involved in the running. Mm. From, we had a fan chat last night, and um, it was just like, to be, in, after sort of eight years pretty much of sort of decline um to be in the mix at this stage of the season is fantastic <clears throat> it's, it's, the, nice, um, it's nice for us to sneak in there as well so we thought we weren't going to be in that mix but now we've got a chance of actually you know sneaking in there now which is you know amazing especially for when our our games in hand against you guys in Colchester uh, as well as the, the Saturday games against well, I think and Barrow and you're, you're in the point where Sort of, you can't afford to drop any points. No, we've got to win every game. We've got we've got to win every single game, which is why I said that it's five cup finals. We've got to win every single one now, of these games. For me, I think Warsaw winning at Tranmere on Saturday um, was key for us because if we hadn't have won that game, that would have given you the opportunity to go above us if you beat us. Mm. <clears throat> um, but you're still four points behind us. Um, uh, the abandoned hunter is on the on the comments. If someone was offering me a point tomorrow night's fixture, I would take it now. And I think, to be honest, a, a draw for Warsaw tomorrow night would be a good point, mm. and uh, that would keep us on track. Um, because effectively, if you only get a point out of that, the most you can get seventy one. So that would pretty much. Can and our next. season, yeah, that was yeah, yeah. I yeah. think if we if we if we don't get a win on Tuesday, that's season over. Um, but mm. that's needless to say, it's been a great run. Uh, if yeah. that happens, um, looking at what you guys did against Tranmere, I mean, second half, you definitely raised the tempo and you you got the three points out of that second half. So we've got to be mindful of that. We've got to be fearful of that. You'll. You'll utilise the channels. Liam Gordon's been doing really well for you guys. Uh, Knowles has been doing fantastic for you guys. So we've got a really Tommy Knowles. Tommy Knowles is uh, is injured. He's been out the last. Is he injured? Games. Yeah, he's he's not playing. The I uh, thought, I the thought he, last game. He, he played against uh, you. Um, um, wait, in... I thought there was. Um, I think I think jo I think Joe Knowles played against Chamber. Um, Knowles, yeah, yeah, Knowles. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, no, not Tom Knowles, Joe Folks. That's the one. Sorry. Yep. Yeah, Joe Folks. Um, uh, I thought, yeah, I thought Gordon and Folks. I thought Gordon and Folks down the channels have got a lot of pace and a lot of uh, ability. So we're going to have to really keep an eye out for those guys. Um, Joe Folks, Joe Folks, he, he had two years at Kidderminster and mm. got Kidderminster promoted. And um, some were sort of predicting that he was going to go there permanently. And he, he came back into the fold at the start of the season. Um, because of injuries, he, he got into the team and um, had a rough time, to be honest. Made a couple of mistakes mm. and um, dropped out of the squad, uh, dropped out of the team. And um, they were, he was looking for a loan, trying to sort of get him some football. Because he'd not played any football all season. Yeah. <clears throat> but then when Tom uh, Tommy Knowles got injured, uh, he got his chance and he's taken it and he's done well. Um, two yeah. assists. He got two assists on uh, Saturday. Um, yeah, that just proves the ability. Well. That that just proves um, the ability he's got. As far as uh, Tom Knowles is very frustrating. Gets us up the pitch very well, but uh, his final ball is terrible <laughs> um, at times. 
Um, Joe Fogs, his cross for Jamil Matt. It's like Jamil Matt has been like screaming out for that kind of delivery. And um, that's really been a big help for us. Um, set pieces, as you know, Warsaw, 20 set piece goals this season. We have to keep a close eye on that one. We have yeah. to be, you know, I'm sure Grant McCann will have looked at that and said, right, we're doing some set piece training this week because they'll they'll have they'll have known that Walsall are very dangerous from set pieces. So they'll, I know Walsall will try and score from open play, but I know Walsall will very much rely on set pieces as well to try and get their their goals. They'll, mm -hmm. I know some of Walsall's players will try will try and play for some fouls near the near the boxes uh, to try and get some good. You know, distances for set pieces. They'll try and play for some fouls every now and then. So, you know, Walsall can be very dangerous from those positions. So, we'll have done the necessary training to to deal with that, and hopefully that comes off uh, on Tuesday. Yeah, it's we. I'm not there for this one. We're going to do a watch along. So, ah, lovely. Um, I'm going. To, yeah. I'm going to be there to do a full uh, match reaction, match review at the stadium, um, and and. Do some other stuff as well so looking forward to yeah. it um sean southall has uh, made a comment if you're on about set pieces then i think taylor allen deserves a shout yeah taylor allen he's i think i mentioned him last time i think he used to be a center forward and then was onto the wing for forest green he's a local lad from warsaw mm. um and then he was playing left left wing back um and then left back and then he's playing left-sided center half and it's like it's like a perfect position for him he's doing really well he's got good pace um but he's got a, a beautiful left foot mm. and um the balls he's been putting in and um, scored his third goal of the season um on saturday he's um things are coming together Warsaw have had a turbulent season with lots of injuries um arguably uh <laughs> Perhaps two of our, or two or three of our best players this season. Yeah. In um, Donovan Daniels, Priestley Farquharson, and uh, Alshin McEntee. Um, or yeah. All good. Um, but the back three in uh, Adebayega on loan from Norwich, Akagbu on loan from Stoke, and Tyler Allen have been uh, have been excellent. Yeah, um, special mention to Taylor Allen. Special mention to Taylor Allen. He's been, you know, very adaptable, very useful, and he kind of shines in his own right. I think he shines yeah. really well as the the kind of um, you know one side of the back three. I think that he overloads it really well. He's a really good, comfortable on the ball. He he presses and passes very well. He drives it forward a lot. And for me, I think that he's been a really top player for Walsall and someone who. I'm sure a few clubs will will try and look at in the summer along with your your Isaac Cutchinson. So um yeah. he's yeah, no, yeah, you, he's definitely impressed me this season. You're a big fan of Isaac Cutchinson. He's been off it a bit, to be honest. I've yeah, I spoke to him. I spoke to Super Sadler Seb um yesterday oh, and he you. and it, and he said that um he said that Hutchinson's been kind of off it the past few games. He's but I think what Hutchinson does really, really well is that he is a really creative link-up midfielder. And I think on his day, he's one of the best midfielders in this league, especially this season. So, I, I, I you know, I, obviously consistency is going to be a, a thing to, to look at to improve on for next season at times. But overall, I still think it can cause problems, major problems, if he starts on Tuesday. So, uh, so I'm not going to discourage him. 11 goals, 10 assists this season. Proves it. Absolutely so, proves uh, it. He might have a couple of off games, but he's definitely a, a big, big threat, isn't he? Oh, 100%. And again, he's another one that's going to get scouted by clubs this summer. Yeah, that's it. Well, that's the kind of thing. It's like in some ways, if uh, Wolves could do with gain up if you want to keep him. Because I think if we don't go up, I think the money will be coming in and somebody will be uh, taking yeah, it away. I think that's, the, that's the challenge, isn't it? That's There's the two challenge. major players. There's two major players at Warsaw that could end up leaving if you don't go up this season through playoffs, and that's Isaac Hutchinson and Taylor Allen. Yeah, Taylor Allen. We'd never have thought that, to be honest, but Taylor Allen has sort of uh, really done very well. Sean Southall's correcting me. He's actually from Cannock, but I mean, it's, it's like Warsaw, Cannock. It's all quite close, really. Um, so he's local lad. Um, 
So, yeah, I'd be happy with a point. Um, a win for Warsaw would, re and depending on Crawley's result, because they've got Wrexham, they're away at Wrexham. Mm. Um, that's going to be absolute massive, isn't it? I'd much prefer Wrexham beat Crawley, and then if we win, then that gets us a bit closer to to seventh yeah. place. <laughs> so I think, as we say, we got to look at Bar Barrow and Crew are the ones that, because if Crawley win, because they've got a game in hand on Crew, if Crawley beat Wrexham, that'll put Crew into seventh place with four mm. games to play. Mm. And, uh, it's and it's going to be a very tight last day, isn't it? It's going to be. Yeah. Uh, and they're playing. They're pl as we said, they're playing teams that are really sort of fighting there. Yeah, um, so they're going to be in dog. They're going to be in dogfight matches. That you know, they're going to be in dogfight matches against dogfight teams who are going to do <clears> everything <throat> they can to to stay in the division. And if we look at the table, because um, I've just got it in front of me, and I thought it's the perfect time to 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 double check it and have a look at it. Um, when when you look at the relegation zone going into those last five games, um, which you know some of these teams are going to be playing up against each other, um, yeah. So it's just on screen now. I mean, Stockport for me, I think will win the title. I think they win that game and the champions. They've had their they've had their wobble, haven't they, Stockport? Yeah, they've got over that, and I think they'll be they'll be fine. When I look at that relegation zone, it's all in Colchester's hands. Um, Colchester, for me, need to win those games in hand, including ours, in the one against us, and then they put Sutton in real danger. I think Grimsby may have just done enough with that win on on the weekend. Um, yeah. I think they'll struggle, but I think they'll just stay up now. Yeah, they need another um, win, don't they? Grimsby need another win to be safe. I think. I would say another win, but you know what? I think with Colchester failing to win sometimes, I think with Forest Green failing to win sometimes, I think with Sutton getting back on form, I don't think Grimsby's gonna uh, be in much danger now. I think that it's between. I think it's between the, the bottom three, um, and like I say, it's all in Colchester's hands. I think if Colchester don't win those games, I think they're they're done. And I think if Sutton win more games as well. I think it becomes less of a relegation battle on the last day of the season. Um, mm -hmm. When I look at the back at the top three, uh, I mean Mansfield's got their games in hand. It's it's all on them now. Uh, and I, you know what? I said this on the six oh six on lower league look uh, on Sunday night, and I'll say this again about Mansfield: if they don't finish in the top three and they don't win in the playoffs. They don't give Clough a new contract. He should be well, going. And I think they, I think that in a fans forum with Mansfield, he's actually come out and said that if they don't go up this season, he's going. And if they go up this season, it'll be a one year extension on his contract. I think so. Yeah. Um, so it's basically all or nothing for Nigel Clough. Um, it's been in, uh, Mansfield, Mansfield have been in and around it for the last few years. They were um, leading the league. They were leading the yeah. league for a bit, and they've they've kind of screwed it up. Um, unless they but losing to Crawley, losing to Crawley, losing to Crawley four one, that must be woeful for their confidence. It was the Let's biggest hinder of their season. I think it's the biggest hinder of their season because that could that could damage them. That could really yeah. damage them, especially going into playoffs as well. Yeah, let's just look at their last few games. Um, <laughs> Forest Green, they couldn't have wished for anything better than that. Then they're away to MK Dons. Best of luck Jesus. there. Best of luck there. MK Dons, absolutely roar at home. And I tell you what, MK Dons again. Uh, up. MK so, Dons yeah. beat Mansfield. They're up. Yeah, they could do, couldn't they? Um, then yeah. Accrington, and then Gillingham. And, and then, then Barrow. Barrow again. Jesus. And you know what? Barrow will want to absolutely win that game because if they don't win that game, any one of them can sneak in their, in their position because they're on 67 points. Crew's yeah, on yeah. 67. Crawley's on 65. Um, let's say we win our next two games this week. We'll be on 64 points. That's only a point outside of seventh. That's only... Um, three points outside of sixth, depending on Cruz games and Crawley's games. So 
it's a really, really tight one. And, and Barrow, obviously, as well. Um, so we've got to still play Barrow. So, you know, we could end up sneaking in there over Barrow, depending on the results by that point. So you know, it's going to be a very tight there. one. I've got a comment there from the abandoned hunter. Wouldn't it be fantastic if Warsaw finished sixth and Doncaster seventh? That would be the best end of the season. That would be the best think, end of the season. In that scenario, I think uh, Crawley would be fifth. Yes. <laughs> and you know what? When I look at the... I mean, Crawley going into fifth, Barrow and Crew sneak out, and Walsall and us go in there, I'd take that. 100%. Um, Mansfield wouldn't want to play any of the three of us, would they? No, 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 no. It's it's the three. I mean, Walsall's in form at the minute. Doncaster's the form team in the last 15 games. Crawley's been immaculate. Yeah. Mansfield, in my opinion, haven't got a prayer in the playoffs, which means bye-bye, Clough. <laughs> um, I think we'll leave it there. That's good. Uh, prediction for Tuesday night, then? You're obviously going to predict a win for Doncaster. Yeah, I'm, I'm confident. I'm going to go with a 2-0 uh, clean sheet again. Uh, fifth clean sheet in the row. I think that um, Biamu and maybe Adelaiden uh, or, or or one of the defenders gets a goal. and uh, Or Craig maybe gets his goal. And I think a clean sheet as well. Uh, I just think it's going to be one of those games where we'll come out of the box in the first half. You'll try and frustrate us. We'll get over that. Maybe get a goal early in the first half. And then Maybe you guys try and raise the tempo in the second. We have a spell where we have to defend very well. And then we break, we get a second goal and try and see it out after that. So I'm thinking that's what kind of game it's going to be. Yeah, I'm, I've not got the stats right in front of me, but we've got a very good record at uh, at your place. That is true. And you know what? This week's kind of the week of the bogey teams because you've got a great record against us at our place. Accrington, we've barely got a point off in a long, long time. So if we can beat two of our kind of supposed bogey teams or kind of overperformers at our place, then that's another statement towards, I mean, we beat third place and now we've got a chance to to, to beat two kind of bogey teams. So, uh, and that'd be another massive statement for our, for our run of form. Yeah. It's nice to be, in, it's, it's exciting time of the season, isn't it? It's the, it's, it's nice to be involved and uh, and be chasing and being in good form. It's the time to be in good form, isn't it? Well, we kind of thought our season was done, but if we win these next two games, maybe it's not. <laughs> well, win the next two games and it's definitely uh, on. getting uh, squeaky, squeaky bum time for quite a few, isn't it? It's Fergie right. time. 100% Fergie time. <laughs> we leave it there. The joy and the pain. We're uh, enjoying the joy. So uh, we he lock heads, see whether we can stop the steam train on uh, Tuesday. All, all aboard the Playoff Express. <laughs> Cheers.